if there's one thing that uh, people like me who make and repair things really like, it's tools and gadgets. Um, and I thought I'd share with you uh, this latest one that has just arrived. So here it is. We have an FLIR One Pro thermal camera. Uh, and this is one that fits on the bottom of a phone, as you can see. Um, there's quite a lot to choose from, and there are other makes, of course. Um, and I'm going to explain to some degree why I chose this particular one. And really, it boils down to price versus the number of thermal pixels. So thermal cameras generally do not have very high resolution. So, you know, 80 times 60 pixels, something like that is fairly typical on the low end. Uh, I chose the One Pro because it actually has 120 by 160 pixels. Um, so that's four times the resolution typically. Now they do others in this particular series. They do um, a One, something called a Home One and a One LT. And they also do a third gen, um, all of which have fewer pixels. Um, because there aren't very many pixels, one of the really useful features, uh, and one of the reasons I bought this, um, is because it has something called MSX, and that's where it also takes a normal picture um, at 1440 times 1080, and it does edge detection on that and merges it with the thermal picture. So that's really, really handy because essentially, instead of looking at a blurry colored picture, you're actually looking at a picture of the objects, you're looking at the edges, you can read things like designators, you can see specific individual cables, and you can um, therefore make a lot more sense of the thermal picture. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look. Strangely, the box opens from the bottom. Um, if I can get it open. Okay, and here we have it. Um, so nicely presented. It's a, a good um, quality box. I sometimes wish that they'd provide them in um, lower cost packaging um, and actually knock the price down just a little bit further. Um, you know, truthfully, I'm not going to keep it in that box um, on a shelf. Okay, and here's a nice little magnetic clip. Um, and we can see uh, a pouch, uh, which is going to contain instructions and a guarantee, I guess, in the uh, in the top. Okay. as expected. Chunky manual in about 50 different languages. In a moulded tray then we've actually got the device itself. Uh, very neat, very compact. And this is the uh, USB-C version designed to fit onto an Android phone. They also do um, all the other types of phone as well. Um, we've got the uh, dual cameras down the left hand side and at the top here We've got an adjuster which which lengthens and shortens the USB connector. Uh, that's important for me because I want to use this while it's in a case. On the bottom, we've got a on off switch and a USB charging point. Delving a little bit deeper into the box. Uh, we've got a um, carry case on this side. This is quite nice. It feels sort of heavy and um, quite dense, quite solid. It flexes a little bit. And in there there's a moulded section to hold everything nice and snug. So that's pretty good. Quite nice. A little pouch in the top for um, cables, I, I guess. And on the left hand side we've got the charging cable which is just a, a normal uh, USB A to C cable nothing special about that now it does say to actually charge this for a little while before I plug it into the camera so I'm going to go away and do that 
So I've charged the battery uh, and I've installed the software. I didn't photograph installing the software um, because, you know, what are we doing? We're going on Google Play and just downloading it. Um, the good news is this does fit. Uh, it adjusts perfectly to fit through the actual case. Um, so that's good. I don't have to take it out of the case to use it. Um, and uh, the installation of the software went smoothly. Onto Google Play, FLIR, install, um, and that's about it. There are a couple of options available um, in the setup, and I've set this so that as soon as you plug it in, as soon as you plug the camera into the phone, the software starts. Um, so that's very nice. Um, and we can see the software is running. It only does about six frames a second or something like that. Um, and I've got a circle uh, where it measures the temperature. It has auto scaled. You can see at the top it's 25.2. And at the bottom it's about 10 centigrade, something like that. Um, and uh, this is a bottle of Stella Artois. So sorry about the camera. I'm moving around quite a lot because I'm trying to get used to it. Um, but we can clearly see the MSX where the outlines of the labels and things like that and the cables in the background are all completely visible. Um, so this, despite the fact that the thermal resolution is quite low, we can easily work out uh, the temperature of different things. Uh, and here I'm just moving the sensor circle across and measuring the temperature of the bottle of Stella. Um, 14 sounds a bit high, but um, uh, given the temperature in the room, it's uh, not such a bad problem. Tastes good. So I've started up a piece of electronic equipment and I'm taking a look at the back of the circuit board. Um, and we can clearly see the things like the uh, capacitors and resistors and the actual thermal trace around it. Um, this is a graphics card uh, and it's you know running at what, 30 centigrade, something like that at the moment in the hotspots. And we can clearly see um, there are some particular hotspots on there. Uh, on the left hand side, for example, are some power regulators. OK, so I switched to portrait and I've actually got this graphics card doing a bit of work now. And we can see the microprocessor through the back of the board is gradually warming up, 64 centigrade now. To the left, there is some memory showing and above it, there's also some memory showing. So we can see the boards perhaps running at about 65, 66 centigrade at the moment. This isn't particularly desirable. This board is set to low voltage. We shouldn't be having um, temperatures quite as high as that. Um, there is a bit of thermal mass, of course, between the processor and the sensor because there's a circuit board there. Um, but nevertheless, it's giving us a good feel for what's going on. Um, and I'm going to take a photograph uh, and we'll just take a look at that. Um, and it's pretty reasonable. We can see clearly the, uh, the processor. We can see the uh, 65 degree region just here. Um, it would be a little bit higher, but I'm not quite in the middle of the processor, uh, just there. Um, the other thing that we can quite clearly see is if we compare just here, there is a screw hole in the board. But the cool spot is showing just here instead. So that's actually only about two or three millimetres. And we can see the same with these uh, capacitors down here. The capacitors are slightly cool spots on the background board. and they're slightly misaligned with their thermal image. Now this is because there are two lenses on the front. There's the uh, the thermal lens and then a few millimeters away is the actual uh, video lens uh, for normal uh, things. So um, when you get very close to the board like this, I'm only about six inches, uh, 15 centimeters away. Um, that misalignment starts occurring. At long distances, it's not there at all. You can't see it. Um, there is actually in software an adjustment that allows you to um, take up that uh, that difference. I'm trying to think of the proper word for it, but it just it won't come to me at the moment. Um, so yeah, so if I was going to be doing this a lot, um, I would turn that option on. And it's a little slider, and essentially we can just move the uh, the thermal and the visual image. Uh, back into alignment um, so yeah but um, this is a problem with all of them it doesn't matter what type you get um, the standalone ones do exactly the same thing the resolution is pretty good um, 
I can't really read the small parts. I can't quite read the barcode at the top. Um, probably if I moved in a little bit closer and held the camera a bit steadier, maybe I could, but uh, um, certainly it's good enough for me to identify specific components. We can see some ICs down here with their legs um, and see which ones are overheating. So, uh, so overall, yeah, pretty happy with that. So it's certainly not a complete review, more of a first impressions video, but hopefully you liked it. If you did, please can you click the like button um, and also subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks very much. Take care. See you next time.